Wait, is she petting Taylor Lautner? <laughs> <laughs> Viewers beware, you might be in for a scare here. So the unique thing about this setup here. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. We are here once again in the studio during the pandemic, socially isolated and distanced. Hey Clint, you wanna give me a high five over Ren? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like we're in a car right now and like Ren is just in the back seat. <laughs> All right, we got some great VFX, some bad VFX and everything in between to break down for you guys today. What is the first clip? Let's see it. You guys give me a lot of crap for not seeing movies, but this is a trilogy I did see. You did see this? No, I'm just, play <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I, I just read all the books. You know. So ch look that's at this not, wolf here. That's just, not bad. Like the wolf effects are actually pretty solid in these movies. Good hair, Sam. That hair interaction with her hand there. Yeah, it looks really good. This wolf would, look, would have looked even better. Like, don't get me wrong, it looks great, right? This is beyond what I could do. But the one thing that stands out is the wolf's shadow on her. One of the challenges about doing fake shadows is that you can't just put a dark layer over your, your object to simulate a fake shadow. You have to deal with blocking the reflections and like how that's shining off the surface. And that gets really complicated. And for the most part, you just see what they did here, which is some soft, vaguely dark shape just moves across the person. And that's why like when you shoot something like this, it's always key to have reference. Mm -hmm. So if you know you're going to be putting a fake shadow over her, then block her with an actual shadow, at least to see what it actually is doing. So before we actually continue, I want to look at the behind the scenes to the shot real quick. Is she petting like a green stuffed animal? It's far more awkward than you realize. Wait, is she petting Taylor Lautner? <laughs> 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 oh no, why did you do it this way? <laughs> he's not even talking to you. Yeah, he's literally just standing there, but that's not the, the most awkward part. Oh no. <laughs> 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 and you can totally tell both of them are incredibly uncomfortable about it. And the worst part is it's so unnecessary. They didn't need him in the shot here. You know, it's funny because like this is the kind of thing where like the director would be like, I need the actors on set so they can have they can have real moments and it can be spontaneous and so can feel it out. And they're right, like they're having a real moment. A real awkward moment. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see in her face, she's like, what am I doing with my life? Here's the thing though, is like the final result, not that bad. No, that's, that's the thing. The, the effects company that did this actually did really good work here. Like the fur looks excellent. And the compositing here is actually pretty solid. I want to make that clear. So this is how I would have done this differently. Your note about the shadow is actually a pretty good one. So what they probably should have done is just come out with a giant wolf-shaped cardboard thing, which they have had for these movies, to kind of show like the people on set the scale of these wolves. They need to just have that there to actually have negative fill against her body there. But overall, I think this, this looks pretty good. Yeah, overall looks great. Really? Wait, is it really? Taylor Lautner went from this to oh. Twilight. Wow, is that a stunt kid or is that Taylor Lautner? I think that's I Taylor think that's Lautner. Straight up I think him. it's Taylor. Wow, dude, Taylor had some rad talent shows in fourth grade, huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's always that kid that did bow staff moves in the talent show. Was that you, Clint? No. I don't got much fight left in me, Max. Oh, where's Lava Girl? Whoa! Wow. Whoa! Dude, what if that's how Sam rolled up? Yeah. <laughs> this is one of those movies that they filmed entirely in a single room. Do that hair feathering. <laughs> if you ever wonder why the edges were always so blurry back in the day and so soft, it's because our hardware was not powerful enough to actually capture all that data. When they shot like the prequel movies and they're shooting that all on digital or they shot this, you couldn't capture all the color data as well as your Luma data. So Luma is like your black and white, how bright things are. Color is what color it is. Most likely they're shooting into a 411 compression. And what the heck does that mean? For every four pixels of Luma data you would get, you'd only get one pixel of color data. So the problem that you would run into is if you were filming somebody on a green screen with a digital video camera, you would have big blocky chunks. Even though it would look good when you just look at it with your eyeballs, the actual color data, the actual green was one quarter of the resolution of your image. So the edges would look junky and you'd have to blur the heck out of it, which is exactly what you see on the blurry edges of Taylor Lautner here. These days, you don't have to do that anymore with full on 444 
video spaces where for every single pixel of Luma data, you have a pixel of color data. And that's how far we've come these days. Then let's split. This is like a really high budget Nickelodeon episode. I know, yeah. It knows what its audience is, you know? It, it knows that its audience is not gonna care about the look of the CGI. Kids don't care about that sort of thing. So when people subscribe to our channel when watching these videos, it actually helps the videos get out there and get seen by more people. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. It helps us out and helps guarantee that you will get to watch the videos when you want to see them. One purpose only, to point out and make public the dishonesty, the downright villainy. So I have never seen this movie. You've never seen Citizen Kane? Have you ever seen Citizen Kane? I have not seen Citizen Kane. <laughs> Isn't it like the film school, classic film school movie? Yeah. The thing is when you watch it, you're like, this is okay, I guess. Why is everybody it, it raving? It's basically because Citizen Kane is like the first modern film in the sense of like how it's shot, how it's approached, how it's edited. For example, you can see the ceiling in the shot. You would never see the ceiling in old films because the ceiling never existed. They would always just have the ceiling be gone so they put lights in there. But Orson Welles was like, you know what? I want to feel the space. I want to get low angles. I want to make him feel tall and heroic and other things like that, imposing. They also made the film for really cheap. They did not spend a lot of money on it. Like what, like a buck fifty? Uh, three fifty. But there's one shot here. So the film was made for cheap, right? Computers don't exist. Why don't you guys to tell me, how do you get a crowd shot? I mean, we all, we all did the Star Wars episode, right? Is it a matte painting? Yeah, it looks like a matte painting. It is not a matte painting. Well, it's kind of a matte painting. Kind but, of matte. But look closely at the people in the foreground. They're moving. I'm convinced it is a matte painting, but There's what is the mo It looks like I, I see like slight like head motion, like maybe like some hand motion, but all I'm seeing are just like blinking lights. Yeah. Do they like punch holes through and like play a little light you got thing? It. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. They cut out, so it's a matte painting. They cut out a little sliver around each head and they have a sheet basically of light behind it and they're moving around. And it gives the impression of the head's just moving a little bit from these little like white rims that shift around on the head. That's heads. cool. Whoa, no way. It's okay. such a awesome, clever trick to make a moving crowd here. It's, it'd feel dead without it. If it's just a picture, like you can't do that. The thing that blows me away is how, how inventive they were to come up with that idea on the spot. Cause it's not like, there's no tutorials to read online. You can't just go yeah. Google it. You can't try it out really beforehand. It's just like, yeah, we'll just paint it because we can't afford a crowd. It's black and white, so you can just paint a crowd really quickly or take a picture of a crowd and then we'll cut it out and put lights behind it and that'll sell the effect. Trust me, I'm making this up as I go, but it'll look great. We should look at more old movies like this, you know, like look at some really revolutionary VFX from, yeah. you know, 80 years ago. So if you have any ideas for old movies that have some pretty interesting solutions to achieving visual spectacle, leave a comment down below and we'll take a look and review it in a future episode. Dude, Pan's Labyrinth was a great movie. Dude, Pan's Labyrinth, I, I made fun of Pan's Labyrinth. I was like, what is this stupid movie, this dumb fawn? And it came out and I was like, oh, let's watch Pan's Labyrinth. Let's, let's get ready for a, for a good laugh. And I was like, oh my God, this movie is a masterpiece. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> so the unique thing about this setup here are the fawn's legs. Basically, you got Doug Jones, a very famous character actor, playing the role of the fawn here. This is all practical. He's in a full, you know, full deal of makeup. Now, Clint, you have a little story with Doug Jones. We were going to film Shadow of Mordor. Clint was going to be playing an orc. It's gonna be Clint's first time being all in makeup, doing a full creature. And Clint tweeted at Doug Jones. All right, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna be, you know, in orc makeup for three days straight. I'm gonna try to channel my best Doug Jones. And Doug Jones tweeted back. You got it, good luck. Do a great job. Holy crap, I remember <laughs> that dude. That was the best. I had to sleep in the orc makeup because it was too, it's too hard to get off. <laughs> yeah, we, we shared a room for that trip and every morning I would wake up and look over and see an orc in the bed <laughs> next to me. Dude, the freaking makeup and stick to the pillows. We're like, oh. <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> pillow come with me. <laughs> now, real human beings' legs obviously don't look like that. These legs are all twisted and backwards and whatnot. Sangeli legs. Did he go full method and just break his knees backwards to do this? <laughs> you know, he probably offered to. <laughs> So his legs are actually at the front where his knees are? Basically his legs were just covered in like a green screen suit and they're basically having to key out the legs. And it was a painstaking process for the entire team because they had to replace the stuff that the leg was occluding. Yeah, that sort of process is never as easy or as straightforward as people think it will be. Ah, oh, such a pain, man. His feet are on top of the actual real costume feet too. Which makes this even more difficult because they have to paint back in the top of the foot 
that's being occluded by his actual green screen feet. Yeah. Not to mention the hole in the bottom of the knee where his leg's coming the out The hole in the bottom of the knee as well. Yeah, but you know what? The final result is really convincing. Absolutely wonderful. You guys, I think it was Cafe Effects did the, did the visual effects for this movie. Fantastic job. So they actually did the same effect um, on another creature in this movie, the pale man, the skinny man. Oh yeah. What a cool creature design. Oh, the best. Don't eat the food. Don't eat the food. Yeah, so as soon as she eats the food, she's done for. Run, girl! Come on! Look at his legs. You see his thighs right there? Yeah, they're super skinny. They're just freaking little skin bones, little chicken legs. Yeah, the skinny legs is freaky, man. So Doug Jones is once again playing the pale man here. And it's basically the same setup. You know, he is in a full body green screen suit and they're basically having to key out the legs. See, yeah. this is an example that works really well for doing this method compared to the fawn, which we saw previously. In theory, it's the same method for both costumes, but one is significantly easier than the other. Specifically because for this pale dude here, we're looking at his front side. If we were to instead look at the back side, that would probably require a different costume. And once again, this is like, assuming you had a costume, this is actually an effect that you could do. Because you just put the costume on and you know, put a green screen suit on, and all you have to do is paint out your legs. Like, you know, they're doing hard camera movements here, but if you had the camera on a tripod, it's almost trivial, especially if you design the costume in a way so you don't have to like have it be occluded by green screen legs. I mean, we kind of did that with Gizmo Duck. That's true. We did kind of do this with Gizmo Duck. Viewers, beware, you might be in for a scare here. In for a scare? For a scare. Too spooky for me. Just know it's VFX, guys. Come on, it's VFX here. Oh, man. You wanna know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, feeling that string run through your skin. Wait, so you're, you're telling me this is a V effect and not a prosthetic? It's both. So how do you guys think this was done? My guess is that he's got a little bit of a prosthetic lip attached to his real lip, and then they CG the cut going back through his cheek. My guess is that the cut's in front on top of his skin, and then they're just erasing his skin underneath. Ooh. Yeah, I'd say Nico's closest. So basically, he's actually going through like silicone. It's a prosthetic that's over his mouth. And he's actually stitching that together. He's getting really close to his actual face, but he's stitching that together. He's pulling the string through. That's all real that you're wow. seeing right there. They basically have like a little stretchy blue screen just uh, inside okay. of the prosthetic. So when he opens his mouth, it reveals the stretchy blue screen. Wow. You can always add to the face, but you can't subtract with makeup. And that's been like the big thing that makeup artists have struggled against. Like, how do you give a character with no nose? Like, well, I guess you have to just build up the entire your face until it's in front of the nose and then you can make no nose or in this day and age you can use CG to remove things. How do they do Voldemort? Voldemort they erased his nose. So like if you actually see like raw behind the scenes images of Voldemort he looks exactly like Voldemort but with the nose okay. and it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just once again a great demonstration of like practical and CG like make everything as practical as you can and then use CG to fill in those little bits that would otherwise make it impossible. So Snoop Dogg has asked me to bring Tupac back to life for a music video. Through new visual effects, newly shot scenes, we want to present to you a reimagined version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I'm going to put a Nerf blaster on a drone. I want to hit your drone out of the air. Challenge accepted. Thanks for watching everybody. We're back in the studio here, recording this as safely as we can. But while we remain safe, I hope you remain safe as well. Navigate the rest of this pandemic. I'm sure things will start to wind down soon, hopefully. But in the meantime, we'll make sure that we're here every Saturday for you guys to be entertaining. If you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so. And on to the next one. I want that butt hair, dude.